Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. If you haven't already, please go ahead and like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. I have like 78 followers. Hi mom, like my whole family and then like two other people. So um, if you would, please subscribe. That does help me. Uh, today is the video that everyone's been waiting for, Beading 101. I've done um, materials, I've done how to string a loom, and then this one is going to be how to bead. So the only way that I know how to do this is just to film me beading and to just kind of walk you through the things that I do and the techniques that I've learned and taught myself over the last two and a half, three years of beading. So I hope you like this video, I hope that this helps, and if you have any questions, if I forget to explain something or don't do a good enough job, tell me in the comments, um, I'll, I'll be sure to try to clarify it. Or if you like it, you can leave nice comments as well, I'd appreciate those. So sit back and here we go. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this dog collar, and the first thing that I'm going to do is get my thread, I'm going to hold and in two hands like this and I'm going to do three wing spans which is just taking it and spreading it out as far as you can like a bird would do like a wing span um so mine's I don't know like I don't know how many feet four feet I don't know anyway but I do that three times so one I don't know if you can hear it two and three and then I cut it And that's a lot to work with. If you don't feel confident having uh, this much string to work with, it's it's quite a bit and it can get tangled up very easily. Um, just start with one wingspan. You can always add thread, which I'll show you uh, probably in this video. So what I'm going to do next is I always lick the end of this. I don't know why. I think it makes it easier. And then I'm going to thread my needle. Maybe. I'm usually pretty good at doing this. I'm sure on camera I won't be. Oh, no, nope, there we go. All right, and then I just tie a knot in the end. Just one knot. All right, and then I stick this on my magnet for a second um, at the end on my loom, and I get to the very end of the string, and then I'll show you how I start. Where's the end? Man, this is super long. Okay, so I always start on the bottom row or the row closest to me, and I tie a knot. I swear I'm usually better at this stuff, just on camera I get a little shaky. Oh, so shaky now. Okay, and then I tie a knot uh, about an inch from my comb over here. All right, and then what I like to do, you find your needle again, which if you have this loom, uh, it does come with a magnet on the end that you can stick your needles on, which I really, really like. And then, I don't know if other people do this, I just think it adds a little security, but I kind of thread this back and forth. Uh, I do this five times. So there's one. And you can see how long this thread is and how easy it would be for it to get tangled up. So I do recommend starting with a little shorter strand. Okay, and then I find my needle again. And so this one ended on top. So I'm going to start underneath this time. And I'm just going to alternate going back and forth. And it's not um, going to look very pretty at first. I'll explain it when we get a little further in. But I do go back and fix, fix this part before I finish my pieces. Okay. And I use my comb. This one's all bent up. All my combs are bent. I need to order some new ones. And I just try to make this straight or as straight as I can get it. Okay, this one ended on top. So I'm going to start on the bottom and just weave it back and forth, alternating above and below. I need to get my nails done. Yikes. Okay. 
fun fact, we went to the NFR last year um, in 2019 for our anniversary, five year anniversary, and uh, I got my nails done then. And then COVID hit that March and I hadn't had them done in a while, so everything shut down. And it is now, what, December, I don't know, mid-December of 2020. And I have not had a manicure or pedicure since December of 2019. So it's been a full year, which is very sad to me. <laughs> I need to do that. Okay, so that was three. Again, ended on top. I'm going to start on the bottom. Sorry, y'all probably don't want to hear any of that stuff. Y'all are here for beating. Oh, well. Right, that's four. I'm gonna do one more. Oh, see, that's a that's a rat's nest right there, and that can happen really easily if you start going too fast. So what I like to do is hold it hold it like this, so I can kind of feel that knot coming, and then I can work it out before it gets too close to what I'm working on. Like that, I kind of stopped that from happening right there because my hand was there. You can usually get them out pretty easily. No big deal. Alrighty, I'm gonna do one more. That was four. And five. All right. Tighten that up. All right, and then I've just got a nice little base here to start with. And as you can see, it's not super pretty. I mean, these are all uneven. I will go back and fix them as we go. I'm pulling that a little bit. You can see I strung this loom yesterday and the tension's already out of it a little bit. It's not really good to let them sit for too long because they will get loose. They will also collect dust. I've had them sit so long where I started putting beads through and like dust was sitting on the beads. So don't do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I've got my computer right here and I've got my bead four tool open. So um, I wish I could show you guys this, but I don't have another camera. So it's black, purple, four silver, three white, four silver, one purple, one black. So um, all I'm gonna do is grab my needle Okay, excuse my daughter there. <laughs> it's quiet time. All right, and I lick my finger and I will get one black and put the excess there. I'll get one purple and put the excess right next to those black. Then I'll get four silver. One, two, three, four. And then I'll get three white. One, two, three. And then I'll get four silver. One, two, three, four. One purple. And then one black. All right, so I've got my pattern. It matches my bead tool. And what I'm gonna do is, starting from the top up here, and the first row is always the hardest, but I'm going to try to, to fish these on there, okay? Okay. And you, you put it underneath, and then you just pop the threads in between the beads, like so, okay? I take my nail or lack of nail, and I kind of push down right here, so the threads are at the bottom of the beads, and then I pull this all the way through. I'm going to pull all that thread through. I usually hold my needle in my mouth. I guess I shouldn't do that while I'm trying to talk, um, but I'm going to keep my finger there so my beads don't fall out, and I'm going to just 
pull all this thread through. Try not to get a big knot on my first row there. Okay, so I'm to the end. So what I'm gonna do now is take my needle, and this part's important, okay? I want all the all my beads to be pushed up, and you're gonna put your needle, I don't know if y'all can see this, but your needle you want as close to the top of the beads as possible. You don't want it to go under any of any of these threads. You want it on top of those threads. I'm gonna push my needle all the way through. Pull it through. Okay, and now they're secure on there. So I can pull this all the way, all the way through. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my comb and I'm gonna push this over. And as I'm doing that, simultaneously, I'm pulling on this excess thread. Okay, so it's nice and tight. You don't want to pull too tight because you don't want to uh, break your thread. All right, and then I'll do my next row. So it's one black, three purple, one white, five silver, one white, three purple, one black. So I'll just do the same thing. I'm going to lick my finger, one black, three purple. One white. Five silver. One white. Three purple. And one black. Same thing. Go from up here, and you'll see it's a little easier on the second one and all the ones after the first one because it just it creates the perfect space for your beads once you get that first row done. Push them all down. I'm gonna pull my needle through, keeping my finger in place. Like I said, I usually hold my needle in my mouth while I'm pulling this through, so I don't have to search for it. But I will not do that while I'm talking. All right. The faster you pull on the string, the higher chance you have of creating a big knot. So the slower you pull, the better. All right. Again, let me explain this part again. I'm pushing up with this finger. I pushed down on the thread with this finger to get those beads sitting on the top. So there's space between the beads and these threads. I'm going to take my needle and keep it as close to the top of the inside of the beads as I can on top of these threads. Okay, push this all the way through. Okay, and then same thing, pull it through all your thread. You know, I may not have to add thread to this, so that might have to be in another video. I'm three wingspans, maybe enough. This is small, it's for a chihuahua, it's a dog collar, um, but we'll see. Maybe towards the end, I might have to add string. Okay, I'm going to push that over. I'm going to simultaneously pull. Okay, and on the first two and the last two, I do something different than all the rest of them just to kind of um, reinforce my beadwork. I really like to, once I get the second row done, I stick my needle through the same way. Uh, as as you do regular rows, just keep your needle towards the top so it's not getting hung up in the thread in, inside, if that makes sense. And I pull it all the way through without creating a knot, hopefully, fingers crossed. And like I said, I don't do this on all of them, just the first and second row and then the last and next to last row. Okay, and then I like to same thing go back up through just to kind of reinforce and hold these two in place all 
All right, so those are sturdy. Those aren't going anywhere. So you can see this is real ugly over here because it started wide and then once I got these tightened down, uh, obviously these were the, just the slack that was created. So let me show you how I fix that. I take my needle and I stick it through the little loop and I just pull and take that slack out. And then I take it up here to the next one and I pull and I take that slack out and then I take it to the next one down here on the bottom and I pull and take that slack out you can see it coming out on the top okay and then I like to push all this over so we don't have extra slack Take it to this top one and pull all that extra slack out. I sure hope y'all can see this. All right. Move that over. Okay. And I'm gonna undo my knot right here. That's why I just tie one knot when I'm starting because I know I'm gonna have to take it out. Okay, and I'm gonna push this over with my comb and tighten that knot. So that cleaned it up a whole lot. And I'd like to tie five knots. I don't know why I've always done that. So one, we'll do a surgeon's knot. We'll go through that same hole twice. Like so. I'm gonna count that as I tied one and then the surgeon's knot counted for two and three, so this is four. And this is five. And then I leave this tail. Alright, so that cleaned it up quite a bit. And then you can always straighten these out. That's no big deal. Alright, and then I'm gonna do my third row. I'll walk you guys through a couple more rows and then I'll uh, probably do a time lapse. So my next row is three black, one purple, three white, one silver, three white, one purple, three black. Alright, so I will get three black. I've only got two left up there, so I'll lick my finger, get some more. Stick my excess right there. So three black, one purple, three white, one silver, three white. And I know my pattern's repeating, so I don't even have to look at my bead tool. I can just look right here. So I know after the three white, I had a purple and then three black. All right, and then I'm gonna stick these on. Whoop. See how easy that was to pop them into place? The perfect space. Okay, and pull it through. sticking that in my mouth habit all right I'm gonna push up with this finger push all these threads down so these threads are at the bottom of the beads take my needle get it as close to the top of the inside of these beads as I can and it should just slide right through pull my needle and voila they're on there pull the rest of your thread through and on this side too I don't know if you can see this but I'm holding these so when I pull I can feel a knot if it's coming and I can stop it before it gets up here to my beads and hopefully get it taken care of so it doesn't cause a problem okie dokie I'm gonna take my comb push it over as I'm pulling the slack and 
there she is. All right, I'm gonna do one more row slow and then I'll uh, probably time lapse the rest of it. All right, so I'm gonna move my bead tool. I guess I'll have to do a video on my bead tool and how I use it. If y'all, if that's something that you guys would like to see, let me know. All right, I need two white, one black, three purple. Three, one white, one silver. All right, that's the middle of my pattern, so I know I can repeat. I need one white, three purple, one black, and two white. I'm gonna stick them underneath, coming from the top. And they should just pop into place. If they don't, if it looks like this when you're done, you just lift up with uh, your finger on the bottom and it should just kind of move them right into position. Push up with this finger that's holding them. Push down on those threads with your fingernail. Pull it all the way through. that had the potential to be a knot. I just pulled slow so it didn't turn into a disaster. Oh, 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 oh. That also has the potential to be a knot. Usually you can just kind of pull on it and they'll come out pretty easy. Okay. So I push down with my fingernail, pushing up with this finger, taking my needle Sticking it in this very small space above the threads, but below the top of the bead, and it slides right through. It's a perfect position. If you're wondering what materials I'm using, like what size beads, what size needles, what type of thread, uh, what type of loom, that's all in my materials video. I will have all that stuff linked in this video as well. I'm trying to link those on um, every video that I do. If you guys want to purchase stuff uh, from my links. It costs you no extra money, but I do get a little commission off of Amazon for that, so that's really great. Um, all right, so that's four rows done. I'm gonna time lapse the rest of it, and if I do have to add thread, I will. There's no way to know right now if I'm gonna need to. It's gonna be close. I hope that it's perfect and I don't have to add thread. That's something that I really don't like to do. Um, it's my least favorite part about beading, but if I do have to add it, I will show you. And if I don't have to add it to this project, um, I'll, I'll make a video about it. All right.
it for the pattern so I'll just finish it just like I started and I will go back down through this next to last row I'm pushing up with this finger and I'm just going at the very top of the bead so it's not touching any of the thread in there okay I'm gonna pull that through all the way pull it tight and then I'm going to go back up through this last row same thing pushing up with my bottom finger and just running this needle as close to the top of these beads as I can so it stays away from that thread and doesn't snag in there and I'm going to pull that through so that's secure the beads aren't going anywhere they wouldn't have anyway but I just do this as an extra precaution and then I do the same thing as in the beginning where I go back and forth through here five times just weave every other one that's one Pull it all the way through my comb to push it over okay I ended on the top of this last thread so I'll go under or towards the bottom and weave just every other one okay I'll pull that through so that was two Tight. Again, ended on the top, so I'm going to go from the bottom. Okay, and vice versa, if I ever ended on the bottom, so it just depends on the, the number of rows that you have, if I ever ended on the bottom, I would start on the top. So you want to do the opposite of whatever, wherever you ended. Okay, you pull that tight. One more. And then I'll tie my knots and be done. So ended on the top. I'm going to go from underneath. Last one. Okay, 
that all the way through. There we go. All right, I'm gonna tie one knot like so. And then I'm gonna do my surgeon's knot where I show you make it a little smaller so that was one knot but I'm gonna stick it through the loop again and make it a double knot or a surgeon's knot I believe is what it's called okay and I like for it to be on the inside of that first knot I don't know if y'all could see that okay so I'm gonna count that as two and three you guys know I like to do five knots so here's three I mean that was four sorry four and this is five, this is the last one. Okie dokie, and then I will leave a little tail on it and cut. I like to leave two or three inches and she's done. Okay, and I didn't end up having to um, add string. I had quite a bit left, a couple of feet left over, so that's, that's good. I like for mine not to have to add string. Um, but I will show you guys that eventually, maybe on my next project. All right, and I'll show you the finished project after I send it off to leather and it gets completed.